What's up and welcome to episode 36 of How Not to Summon a Podcast. I'm Shini Senpai and this week I'm joined by the guy who would love to mop up after Midari, Jim. That would take a long time to mop up. And that guy who really wants Yumiko in his debt, Grayson. <laughs> in my deck. In his debt. <laughs> oh, what is a deck? <laughs> That's not how that he works. He just wanted it to be that. He just wants Joy Cork. <laughs> and this week we are going through episode 7 to 12 of Kakagure. See, you fucking couldn't do it again, <laughs> could you? With the pronunciation. I just hope that. Everyone. There's too many Ks. <laughs> too many Ks in that name. So let's jump in where we left off, and we're into episode seven. We left it on uh, the click of the gun cliffhanger? It was not a cliffhanger. I mean, we knew she weren't going to get shot, but yeah. So Yumiko tells Midari that she knows for a fact that the gun she's holding is her gun. And she knows this because she marked the barrel of the gun with lipstick. And that she loaded three of the six chambers with lipstick. So she said there's a three in six chance... The the gun's gonna misfire. I thought she filled the barrel. Oh yeah, yeah. I said loaded the gun. Yeah, you three heard it, right? three chambers of the, she chambers. loaded three chambers of yeah, the gun. She loaded three chambers yeah. of the gun with lipstick oh, and th- filled the barrel with and lipstick. Filled, marked said that. the barrel oh, with lipstick the as well. But yeah, the whole point Keep is to, <laughs> to <laughs> stop. No, the gun he said mis- filled the fucking chambers. He's, I was like, there's chambers, that, then there's the barrel. He said the barrel the first time, and then he said chambers afterwards. Yes, check the tape. Fucking didn't check the tape. Well, next right. week, next week, Jim will come back to apologise because he's wrong. Jim will never apologise <laughs> for anything. <laughs> and then she turns around and lies and says, "Actually, there's just no bullets in it whatsoever. I didn't fill it. I didn't fill it with bullets." Fair, because she doesn't want to get shot. I mean, fair. Yep. Again. Well, we all just want to know what it feels like. <laughs> And then Midari goes into Not this somewhere like important, like a thigh or something. Important in the shoulder. Oh, yeah. that's, that's not somewhere that. important. Just you know, there's a the major leg. artery. That yeah, runs through in your the leg. leg. That you yeah, don't really right. Want to get sh- right. Okay. Anyway, yeah, carry on. So Midari launches into a bit of a speech about how she loves the thrill of risking it all, meaning her life. She loves the thrill of a game that risks her life. She doesn't need a school. She needs a hospital. Like a caring hospital. A caring yeah. hospital. <laughs> you know, not, not one of those ones that don't care. Caring hospitals. <laughs> We've all seen them. And then she mentions how she lost her eye, her left eye to be precise. She lost it to the president because the president took it as a prize. This isn't true, really. Um, no. Because when we get the flashback, that's not really what happened. She took it out of curiosity to want to see what was behind it, right? No, the president didn't take it out. The president mentioned that she wouldn't mind seeing behind it, and then... She stabbed herself she, in the eye yeah. with a pen. But the president was like, I oh, will set up a procedure so you can have it surgically removed, and Midari was like, I'll just do it now, thanks, and shoved the pen <laughs> in it. I can do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> she was busy tomorrow. She had plans, so she was like, I'll get it out now. Basically, the president turned around to her and was like, your life is no good for a life plan because you are just... Too a, ugly, apparently. You're a degenerate and a, a waste of space and you're not pretty as well. Yeah. And Yeah, the president saw no merit in her having a life plan. And then she mentions, a, she starts talking about the moon and she's like, how do we know if we've ever seen the other side of the moon? And Because there might be alien bases on the other side of the moon because we've never seen, not the fact that we rotate what? around the moon. But we only ever see one side of the moon. Transformers, oh, well, dark go. side of the moon. That's what she says. She says yeah. we only ever see one side of the moon. We, we do only ever see one side of the moon. Well, there you it's go. In, it's in perfect rotation with the really? Earth that we only ever see one side, yeah. There you go. So how do we know what's really on the other side of the I moon? I don't trust the moon all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> it looks shifty. He does. By never shifting. <laughs> only comes out at night, guys. Hmm. And then she says that she's never seen the back of an eye socket and she's never seen all the connections and the, the bits that make it work well, i've never seen the back of my fucking head but i don't want to fucking take it off so this leads madari she says like we'll have a procedure set up and i'll pay for it and we'll have your eye surgery removed so i can have a look behind your eyes fuck it it's weird it's a power play thing right that's, is it? that's all this is just google it or is she just psycho this is i, I get a book this is just, just a power psycho. play this get, is just 
I can and have the power to have your eye removed. Britannica so. Encyclopedia. I'm going to do it. Get one. I made that joke earlier when we were talking. <laughs> you joke stealing prick. Which one? The Britannica Encyclopedia one. You can get them. Scenario. Asshole. You, you've got the power. <laughs> Scenario. You've got the power to do it. I got the would power. You, would you do it? What? Remember what? my eye or someone if else's? If you had the power to could just command somebody who's in that much debt to you, you could just turn around and be like, do you know what? Uh, if you take your eye out, debt's, you're debt right. free. Before we answer. Knowing that they can't pay it back. So you're never going to get your money back. So mafioso style, you, they can't pay you what they owe you. How are you getting it back? Right. Before you answer, Jim, Sheeny, what's your answer? Yeah, Sheeny. <laughs> <laughs> Being the evil blonde one, what's your answer? If I had the power to uh, to make somebody do it, and I felt like it... He's doing it. He's I, fucking doing it! Then I'd do it. Fucking psychopath. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> fucking psychopath. <laughs> I don't really want an eye. I'm not going to lie. What are you doing I, then? I, I'll take a kidney. <laughs> what I, ne- for? I need a new one. <laughs> don't I need Tim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't need Tim this shit. <laughs> Why would you, why are you taking a kidney? <laughs> well, no, in fact, no, I'd probably keep it in my debt in case I need anything at any time. You just... How? So you're never I expecting them to repay. Eventually, they've no, got no, to no. repay you. No, though, no, no, no. I, I, need, I need a new lung. I get a new lung. <laughs> I need a new kidney. I've got a new kidney. You might not be compatible for a start. Yeah. But... Maybe, I'll have, not compatible. <laughs> maybe I'll have plenty of them in my debt. Just wants their feet. Just wants their feet. I don't need their feet. <laughs> He's got plenty. <laughs> White peak, but with feet. <laughs> no, I don't think. I don't think actually. Because he thought I, about it. I'm probably. He thought about it. I'm probably one of the good ones. Would here you still in this be? Room. So you you're saying you'd still be like a nice guy, and you'd be like, pay me when you can. No. I love that in your words you say you're not a nice guy. No, I'm not but saying that. I'll steal I'm their eyeball, saying, but you as a nice guy wouldn't, yeah? Is it not being <laughs> is it not being overly nice to turn around to somebody and be like, oh, pay me when no, you can? No, I don't think can't. it's overly nice to go, you can keep your eyeball. No. I'll have a payment scheme. I'll have a payment no, scheme. No, we, I'm establishing, they cannot pay with money anymore. So how are you getting what they owe back? They have no assets, no money. So you have to, they have to do something. Oh, are we? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I'll take my pound. Do of you know flesh. what? I'm the bad guy. <laughs> yes, I wanted an eye. James is fucking what? Is sticking it one? in? What? <laughs> I didn't say anything. Right between the toes. Is I did. You know how you can anything. pay me? Turn around and bend over. <laughs> Here comes the airplane. <laughs> and, oh, one mil, two mil, three mil, four mil, five mil. <laughs> He stood there. No, no, paint yourself black and white, please. (laughs) Where's that? It's a cow. It's a cow, Jim. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, dear. No, I think, to be fair, if you're saying that I am owed, I would keep them for a favour. Makes more sense. It makes more sense than just taking an eye. Having somebody that owes me something makes more sense. Having somebody that will do something for me. Yeah, but no yeah, but you're in a position where you <laughs> don't, don't like, like the president. You want for nothing. No question. You want that. things that you can't normally have. That's the position the president's in. The president's like, well, I don't need your money. I don't need your life for a life. Yeah, but she's a gangster. Like do you know what I haven't seen? I haven't seen the back of an eye socket. So give me that. What? That's the position they're in, so that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't need this person for anything, really. Right. So, She's a gangster. But, but you want something back because they owe you. No, you're a gangster. Yeah. You want them in your debt. I've also never seen a cat been jerked off. I'm still not going to fucking pay someone to do it. Watch South Park. Red Rocket. That's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, it's the same. You think. <laughs> okay, your tongue. I looked at me. Red Rocket. <laughs> Red Rocket. <laughs> Preparation. <laughs> he knows how it comes. He knows that. I know, how, I know what being in debt, his, being in his debt means. <laughs> <laughs> no, Take if I was off. to do that, I'm gangster. No gangsters, no gangsters have people in their debt and go, all right, take your socks off. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I would keep them to owe me. It makes more sense. It's the it, barefoot gang. 
<laughs> you know what, right? Watch out. No, no, no. Watch out, guys. It comes to Barefoot Gang. <laughs> Do you know what, Shuni? That, <laughs> that was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> I'll give you that one. That was funny. But the gangster movie, they they like, click in They come. The fucking warriors down the street style. Is oh, it? God. <laughs> okay. I'd rather have them in my debt. Why, why would you not want somebody that owes you something? Yeah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> what? You're Why wanting you an not eye. want someone that owes you something? Grayson? What? Well, he wants an eye. Yeah. No, I no, want no, them in no. my debt. I didn't say I want an eye. I'm just saying... No, it. you said you wanted an eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, got if, it. if somebody turned around and was like, oh, I'll give you my eye, I, I wouldn't say no. I'd just be like, okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> sure. I get it. Go on, I'd be like, no, just owe if me the money. Went, well, well, how about I give you my eye? Will that settle the debt? I'd be like, oh, all right, fine, yeah. I don't want for nothing. So. And I'm the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> Just get, put it in the jar. <laughs> put it in the with jar. The <laughs> with the pickled onions. <laughs> he owns a fish and chip shop in mine. Uh, yeah, so. Grayson, you, you just, haven't even answered. What? Are you what just would doing you do with doing? the O? Just, I, I, just, I want them fuck all. Home. Yeah, but this person doesn't want to stay in debt. They want to pay it back. No, tough shit, mate. Right. You ain't got the money? You're fucking in debt with me. So then they, they just disappear and you'll never see them again. Oh, they'll disappear. Already. I'm saying you need your thing now because you don't know if this person's going to be around forever. You can't keep them in your debt because they might just vanish. Oh, fine. I'll take the feet. There you go. <laughs> take the feet. <laughs> then they're not fucking leaving. He's backed into a corner. <laughs> Give me your nails. <laughs> are you taking the nails, eh? No. What are you taking? Fuck all. You've got to have something. Really? I don't have to have anything. There is an option of doing nothing. No, not there, there isn't. Option. So you're just losing money and not asking yeah, for it Yeah, fuck it. This guy. Not they're a good loan shark. I was going to say, bad businessman. Yeah, bad businessman. I mean. <laughs> Back to the story. So, Midari stabs out her eye with a pen, and the president does not give a shit. That's where I have a problem with this. She's not even bothered. Why stab... You... Mm. The anime didn't even make well, her do make you think a the sound. the person was even going to go through with this whole procedure for the eye thing? I think she was just all talk. Nah, and then Midari stabs her eye out, and she's really? like... Really? Okay. Cool. She, then she has to save face by being like, cool, yeah. I'm not yeah. interested anymore. Yeah, no, I was going to say, turn, turn <laughs> to look at don't the throw fish. Up, don't throw up. <laughs> I, the cracking crazy so bitch. That so fucking girl just war. stabbed herself in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nuts. And she gets sexually aroused by stabbing her eye out as well. It hypes her up. This chick's crazy. Did you just hear that silence? That's <laughs> like, we are not very silent very often, guys, but there's nothing that we can say there. Matari turns around to the president and is like, I, I still haven't paid you back. How am I going to pay you back? And the president goes, join the council. And Midari's like, yeah, but that's boring. I don't want to do that. And the president goes, I tell you what, join the council and one day I will kill you. And Midari's like, okay, I'm in. Yeah. It's a hospital. This woman needs to be committed. <laughs> All these fucking people need to be no, committed. No, no, no. No, her in particular needs to be committed. Like, I'll kill you. And she's like, oh, hold on a minute. I <laughs> yes, could die. The, the, the joy is you don't know when. That's what she likes. Oh, yeah, that's real good. That's what gets her That's off. called life. You don't know when you're fucking going to kick the bucket <laughs> yeah, but by more, the farm. A more extreme version because you've got somebody following you around who at any moment could kill you. What? That's life. Move to fucking London somewhere. <laughs> the dark hoodie. <laughs> hey, that's a poor reflection, London. The dark. Go to school in America. <laughs> the dark hoodie no, figure no. that's standing behind Grayson right now tells me that any time it could happen. <laughs> Schools yeah, in America, just... you're guaranteed to fucking die. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, oh, and Grayson. once again, we lose some more Americans. <laughs> well, there's yeah, another. Yeah, but to gun. be fair, if they're still in school, we're going to lose them anyway. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> So we go back to the game between Yumiko and Midari. Please. And <laughs> this, for the second hand, Ryota decides that he's going to lay down the exact same set of cards that he did in the first game in the hopes that Yumiko would know that that's something he would do because he's so predictable. They've been friends for six days <laughs> and he's doing this. Well, I know you inside because, out. <laughs> because he's so vanilla that she's just like, yeah, he's just going to play the same would hand again. Would you think that I would do that? What, vanilla? Miguel. No, you've got a foot fetish. No, that's, pretty, that's pretty out there. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what if your feet? What if your legs? <laughs> Didn't know they were legs. And 
just as the cards are going to be revealed, Yuma Koten's to Midarin is like, I know for a fact that this game right now will end up ending in a tie. She calls it out. She's like, this is all going to end in a tie. Doesn't she also say, I'm glad I kept this to three games? Yeah, Because yeah, she's like, I'm, you're lines. fucking psycho. <laughs> Even <laughs> Yumiko's just like, you've, why are you the way you are? But Yumiko shows no fear at all because she's, she's, she she's knows what she's doing. As well. She just knows what she's doing, I guess. But she kind of doesn't because there's always that, which we've seen in the previous game she's played, there's always that chance that she could lose. Even in the very first time she played Mary, she was like, I didn't know I was going to draw scissors. That's just luck. But that's what she likes. Scissors. She, she, <laughs> yeah, scissors. <laughs> she ends up guessing all five right. She knew exactly what Ryota was going to do. She got it completely right. Pulls out the gun. She points it at Madari. Click. Doesn't fire. Madari creams her pants. And I mean, she does at this point. Even I wrote, I wrote down, yeah, Madari. Yeah, she gets off. Big so Shimonita time. happened like at least a month ago, <laughs> right? No, two months ago. And here we are. And here we are, back Full to circle, Grayson pants. cleaning, mopping up those discs. <laughs> every day at work today. <laughs> every day I'm shuffling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you shuffling across the floor, yeah. So Yumiko turns around and says that this wasn't by chance. Anyway, when she was going to select a gun from the two gun options she judged the weight and knew that one was lighter than the other based on the amount of bullets in the chamber by 10 percent. i don't know from experience if you'd be able to tell if a gun was fully loaded or not but yes, probably you i was going to say it's probably yeah, pretty noticeable can, yeah. isn't it yeah so they go into the final round and at this point ryota gets rushed to choose he can't sit and think about it they force him to pick quickly so he just lays a random set of five cards down yumiko Loads two bullets in the chamber because she is unhappy that they're treating Ryota the way he is. So she turns around and is like, I'm you'll pay for that with two bullets, two bullets. And Midari loads two bullets. This is when Yumiko brings up the fact that she knows the about the camera and the mirror and the things are reflected backwards in the screen. So the, for the first two games, Ryota was using his left hand, but yet for the last game, he's used his right hand. So the game's been reflected, so she's cheating by changing the order. Yeah, so she's changing the flip of the cards, the sequence of the flip, to favour Yumiko. So all the images are reversed in the order that Madari wants them to be, so that Madari can lose. She wants to lose. And she does. No. I thought she so, loses no, all five. So they, draw again. they both they draw. They both lose. Yeah, because she literally makes all five lose, and she insists that. And she's so does going Yumiko. To lose. Yumiko on purpose gets all five wrong as well. What is the point of this? And, well, Yumiko oh. gets pissed off. That's what she says well, yeah. to Madara. She turns around and goes, "I didn't want to play this game. You're pathetic. This is pointless. This isn't gambling. You don't play to lose. This is." She kicks off and she just calls Madari pathetic. She's planning to die. And she leaves. And we cut back to Mary. And Mary outright refuses the student council president and says, there is no way in hell I'm joining the student council. I don't like the system. Yeah, because we didn't really say about that, that she has talked about the plan that she has in, doesn't she? She has a life plan and then the council president well, had, turns, had a life plan. Off. Yeah, and the council president basically says, come join the student council. And she's like, nah, mate, I'm all right, thanks basically and the episode ends with ryota and yumiko and they have sort of like they have that little moment together I can't, is it the sweet moment where i'll buy you sweets yeah mm. and they do like a coin flip I'm standing there and she's like we'll do a coin flip and i'll uh, you know loser pays for the other one's sweets this episode had the point where i was just nah i'm out at the end of it with the guns the puddles. Yeah, the puddles. The... As I said, I didn't like Midari. Nah. From the, the only character I really just too was much, like... There was too much liquid. That She was just too much in general for the rest of this just anime. anime. What, what the whole anime was going for, she was just this odd one out that was a bit much. Do you know what? Would have been really good to have this game, style game, Maybe even fucking Russian roulette for all I care at this point. You could have the fake guns yeah. with the little bang flags. Well, no, I was just thinking, like, keep the game like that. And then this really should have been, like, the student council president and her. 
at the end. A higher stake. At high stakes. This is the highest stakes that they can get. Yeah. Whoever yeah, loses... They don't actually gamble for anything. No, that's what I mean. Really? I mean, obviously... You're well, they do. The, yeah, place yeah, in the school. But we will come to that because it's, for them, it's not about anything, is it? It's just about winning and losing. But we go into episode eight. Episode eight is the first time we get an introduction to Yumemi. Now, I actually like Yumemi as a character. The, the, Pop star the, girl. The, the idol. Oh, I like, yeah. I like Yumemi. I like Didn't mind him. And we see that Ryota is watching her on his phone. She's an idol. She does big concerts and performances. And he's watching her on uh, on YouTube. Yeah, I did see it was YouTube. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, to be fair, our, our videos have been banned from YouTube. So yep. they're not going to fucking allow Fuck that. you, YouTube. Yeah, fuck YouTube. you. YouTube. We're going to Amazon. Give us that sponsor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazon Prime. <laughs> And we see Yumiko go to her locker. She opens up her locker and she receives some sort of letter. And we'll come back to that later. Then we see that the president, the president, is getting on a plane, uh, a helicopter, and she's leaving the school. She's got business to attend to. And she's she turns to Sayaka and she's like, you can handle what happens around here. You, you've got it covered. I've got stuff to do. And she leaves. And we jump a week. So it's been a week on since the president's left. And the student council is falling apart. It's in bits. People aren't really cooperating together. Kaide is almost sort of self-appointed himself in charge of everyone. He's being a bit of a dick. And Midari tells him that if he hates Yumiko so much, why doesn't he go and take on Yumiko? If he's got, you know, he's got so much to say about it. Why don't you go and deal with it? It does become a bit of a dick measuring competition here, doesn't well, it? Really? Everyone's afraid of her. Yeah. Well, you know. they're worried because she's that out there that she seems to just take on anybody and potentially can win. Except Yumemi, who turns around and says, do you know what? I've got it. And she says that she'll handle you, Miko. <laughs> the way you said that. <laughs> All right, you know this. Got it, bro. Don't worry about it. But she, oh, she's so back. nonchalant. She's like, do you mind if I take this? I'll take Yumiko on. Not bothered. We jump to Yumiko and Itsuki has joined their little group now. She has decided to befriend Yumiko now. It's a, it's a play for power is what it is. Itsuki has seen Yumiko and thought, if I attach myself to this person, I can go places. She says that she needs to be on that student council to appease her father. He is the one that's telling her to do so. And she thinks the best way to do that is to team up with Yumiko and take them down to then form a new council that she can be a part of. She also states that she believes that at the minute, the school is basically revolving around Yumiko because of everyone's talking about her. Well, yeah, because she's so different. She doesn't give a shit about the rules. They've, so seen, they've just... seen her defeat student council members and... Bring them to a draw and just do all sorts, really, and lose and take and the not piss give out a shit. of the the pet system. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like lose and not give a shit. Yep, about it, which is breaking the system down slowly. It is pretty much, isn't it? It's yeah. like yeah, this system doesn't matter for shit. I can do whatever I want. Also, by the way, she's only allowed to challenge one person as a yes. pet, yes, and everyone's yeah. under the impression that she is waiting to challenge the president but who has gone missing have you noticed she's not had to challenge anyone at the moment she hasn't no that's so what she i mean draws challenges in well that's what i mean like people they are coming her. to her because they're like shit we can't let her get to this point but she hasn't actually challenged anyone yet nope so she hasn't needed to it's almost been like the fear of her challenging someone it was how she established herself early on. She took Mary on straight away. Well, mm. Mary challenged her straight away. And she destroyed Mary, who was, at that point, one of the higher-ups. So we jump back to Yumemi, and she is doing a fan meet. Fan meet and greet. And we, we meet the fan club president, who's this big, fat, stereotypical otaku oh, guy. I'm your, I'm your best friend, you know <laughs> thing. What was that? Yeah, I missed that. What was that? <laughs> I'm your best friend. <laughs> Give me a hamburger. And All then right. <laughs> he shakes her hand. What? It's my hungry face. He, sh- <laughs> he shakes you, Memi's hand, and then it cuts to 
her washing her hands and her demeanor changes completely. This is why I quite like her character. Her demeanor changes and she's like, I hate these disgusting pig fans. She despises her fans. It's really weird she, because she believes she's so above them. We also see that Kaide is funding her match against Yumiko. He has forked up the money to create the stage, as it were, for their match. He's decided to fund it. Why? A table. Don't know. No, because it's a whole show. <laughs> a table. It? Show a fucking <laughs> table. I bought you a real nice table. It's engraved in everything. It's an Ikea one. And we cut to Yumiko going to Yumemi's dressing room. And she's taken Ryota with her. As she gets there, she's greeted by the girl at the front door, the Yumemi sidekick. I didn't bother with her name. Uh, who says, like, I've got to pat you down before you go in because fans have been known to smuggle in recording devices and stuff like that. It's fucking pointless because Yumemi doesn't come across as somebody who'd invite fans into her dressing room anyway, does she? No. 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 So, but she has to. To keep face. Not to her dressing room. She can do meet and greets and shit like that. No, I thought she had to to keep face because that's what other idols do. Maybe. Yeah, then why wouldn't you allow a recording device? Because you don't want to yeah. know what's been yeah, said because, inside there. So Yeah, she, but you're not going to talk casually. If you're inviting there to meet. No, to, but it's after they leave. I would have thought her dressing room was where she turned into herself, was her safe space as such. Maybe. But anyway, she gets patted down um, and they do, obviously don't, they don't find anything on Yumiko. She goes in. Yumemi challenges her to a top idol match. And there's 50 million yen on the line. But there's also, if Yumiko loses, she must form an idol unit with her. And Why? She, she's going to take over Yumiko's life plan and treat Yumiko as a double act in her idol performances. Oh no, please don't make me rich and famous. <laughs> but you're not rich and famous. <laughs> But you're not rich and famous. What, as an idol? It's yeah. her step to fame, isn't it? Yeah. She, she wants to be an idol that will lead to other things. But we'll, we will come to that. Also, how does she have the authority to change the life plan? I thought it was the president only that had the ability to change the life I plan. I guess the debt can change hands. No, but the president is the one that formed it's not, the life she's in, plan. No, she, well, she's in debt to the council, and the council formed the life plan. So I guess another council member has Maybe. the authority to do it. Do they? I Maybe. don't know. But it's, they must do. Or is she making that call because the president's not here? P- yeah, potentially. Kaide's doing a, what he wants to do at this yeah. moment. So Yumiko calls out Yumemi. She turns around and says, I know you actually despise your fans. In fact, I have a letter here that you tore up and threw away, which was from the club president of her fan club, praising her that she's decided... I don't really know if that's good enough proof, by the way. Like, I've got a letter you threw away from one of your fans. That's... I have quite a few of these. I'm sorry, I can't keep them all. Imagine yeah. if you kept all I'd of your fan I'd just be like, letters. oh no. Like, what? Uh, uh, <laughs> Literally, it's the most... <laughs> lit- pointless. You Seriously? Maybe... So, but write to us. Comment on our Discord. Yeah, comment on our <laughs> Discord and write to us. I mean... <laughs> yeah, we're like, not going to screw it up and throw it away. <laughs> like, we'd like Sheeny it, will. to be fair. Sheeny <laughs> will, but me, me and Grace... The most active are, member. Yeah. Not, if, not unless they're in my debt. <laughs> so, then you're losing an eye. Then you're taking an eye. <laughs> it's better than being part of the No Shoe Gang. <laughs> <laughs> Come join the gang. It's expand. You can send Jim your feet at... Oh, no! no. <laughs> All pictures uh, of feet no. addressed... No, 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 no feet, thank you very much. He just doesn't want to open it or work and be like, oh, I don't want to open it ever (laughs) and go, oh. So Yumemi states that she wants to be an Academy Award winner and walk the red carpet. That's her end game. That's what she wants. She wants to win an Academy Award and be an actress. Anybody can do that. Orlando Bloom's done it now, hasn't he? And Leonardo she, DiCaprio. And she's decided that she wants to switch from acting and... Uh, not switch from acting, switch from being an idol to being an actor. Grayson's sending photos. <laughs> I am. Taking photos as we're doing our recording. And she states that she thinks that her th- fans are pathetic. She doesn't know why they sweat so much more than she does when she does all the hard work. They have dirty, sweaty paws. 
How can they? She highlights sweat a lot. So believe how do they me, sweat more than I do? And believe me, you'll never have that insult, guys. We are very sweaty boys. In this <laughs> speak studio. for yourself. Oh, I can see it. Get your mop. Put it in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> can see it right there. It's a very warm studio at the moment. No sweat. It is. Unfortunately for Yumemi, Yumiko has recorded the entire conversation with the recording device. She slipped into the sidekick girl who patted her down's pocket as she was patting her down this is a good little switcheroo it's a good little switcheroo i didn't see for a start where she hid the recording device you mean when she was very worried about where she hid it because i was like notice that one would she (laughs) they can they can feel stuff what's wrong with you Don't do maybe, it. maybe when you get a woman, move somewhere that isn't just feet. <laughs> I have a lady. Yeah. You poor... feel this? <laughs> right. And I she don't can feel to be you sticking between her toes. recording devices. She can feel you between her toes. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Yumiko I'm... makes the voice recorder part of the bet. She's like, I tell you what, if you lose, I get to play this voice recorder and completely destroy your idol career. Yumemi has that crazy psychotic laugh moment and she's like, yeah, all right. Why? Bet's on. Because she's been caught. I hate the crazy psychotic looks yeah. of animation on That's this. That's the fuck you've got me laugh. That's what that is, but there's nothing I can do about it. Just say fuck you've got me instead of just the, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm in the real shit now, ain't I? Sometimes you just got a lot. That was crap. <laughs> he ain't winning no fucking Academy Award. <laughs> I wasn't acting. That's what I would do. Oh, fuck. You've got me. Oh. So. Sounds like a South Park extra. <laughs> <laughs> Done really badly. Oh, no. No. And no. And no. So, Yumiko, as she leaves, she turns around to Ryota and she's like, we still haven't solved the fact that somebody left the... Torn up letter and the voice recorder for me to find. As if they wanted to set up Yumemi. I didn't realise the voice recorder was there for the setup. Yeah, she says that it was in the locker with the letter. Then we jump to Runa and she is on the phone to the president. And she says to the president, you need to get back to the school soon because everything is falling apart at the minute. Mr. President, you need to get back soon. We jump to Yumemi's concert, which has just finished. And the start of her match against Yumiko. And we see, at the end of the episode, Yumiko all idled up. And we go into episode nine. Episode nine opens with Yumemi talking about her dream of the Academy Award. We get the little flash of her in the red carpet and she wants to be this uber-famous actress. The game rules get told now. So it's it's noughts and crosses, right? Tic-tac-toe, yeah. Essentially, yeah. So you win one of the games, you get to pick a square, you get three in a row, you win. Make sense? Yeah, it's tic-tac-toe. It's literally that easy. Ryota is panicking again, like normal. That's all his character really does. He's worrying about... Like I said, has no depth or any actual point. The Courage the Cowardly Dog of the anime world. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what? I'd rather have Courage the Cowardly Dog in this animation. Uriel! Exactly. (laughs) And we get into the first game. And the first game is that they choose a random member of the audience who has to divvy up their phone, download a voice app, and they have a sing-off. It's that simple. This I was like, Yumemi's a professional idol, right? So she sings. She lost. Yeah, she gets a, a score of 85 on the app. Yumiko performs. She gets a score of 98 on the app and destroys Yumemi, who's an idol. Now, Yumemi's throwing the games on purpose, right? Is she? Yes, Is she? because I believe she establishes that she wants to lose and then come back from the brink. That's what she says. That's why she's so confident, because she loses the first game and she then talks about like the fact that she's not bothered. It's one game. and Anyway, it jumps from game one to game five. Because all the other games are fucking pointless. Well, we didn't see, we didn't see the other ones. We just go straight into game five. I had to scribble it out because I was like, oh, this is game two. And then they were like, no, it's game five. And I was like, oh, okay, we've jumped why? to game five. Like, uh, show us the games. Or have you literally decided that, no, we can't be asked to come up with games anymore? We just want to get so to... You've got to have point. that thick, thick plot. Yeah, that real heavy plot that's non-existent in this fucking anime. And it's a game of Old Maid, which 
Yumemi throws again to leave herself down. How does she end up being down a double match point? How has you? Uh, how has Yumiko not won the match? Why does she make it a double match point rather than winning the match? Did anyone not see the grid? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, she she literally could have won the match at that point. Why? Why did she not? She doesn't. She picks another square to make a double match point. I don't know. I never understood that. But I was like, she she, she could have just won, plot. and she's trying. That's not all it could be. Weird plot. plot. So that, that get- makes no sense. She's there to win. She's a gambler who's there to win. Why would she not win when she's got the chance to fucking win? Yeah, I, d- I didn't get it. And then they go into game six, and it's called Know Your Fan. And a fan is selected at random, and you have to guess, or be the closest to guessing, their birth month. This is the point that Umemi's super happy. Because, because it's rigged, and she knows everybody there. She bumped the ticket prices up to such a high point that she knew only her fans could afford it. And she knows absolutely everything about every single one of her fans. I thought it was like because, super fans as well. Because so of, like because of the, people. Yeah, super fans. No, it was a huge arena, really. Yeah, but, but there was only like a small amount and of people. She, there. There's only the student council as well. And she knows yeah. everything about the student council as well. She has memorised, like any good idol does, every single detail about every single fan. Like, yeah. Yeah, sure, that's, that's something we can do. <clears throat> I can't even remember my own family's birthdays so Same. you would not be <laughs> yeah. yeah so little does she know that mary itsuki and ryota are there and seat 33 gets picked and who is it it's mary yumemi has no idea who mary is she's not one of her fans she's got no idea this is potluck right it's been rigged i think this has been rigged at this point how is it not so, i don't rigged? know is it rigged oh, that mary's rigged. seat was picked oh, really it's rigged a well, three in well, Yumiko, what, Yumiko, Yumiko doesn't cheat. She plays it by luck, doesn't she? Yeah. So, or is it Has somebody Kaide? else rigged it for him? Is it exactly. Kaide? That's what I thought. Has somebody else know. rigged it for him? So, Yumemi is panicking at this point because she knows that Yumiko is friends with Mary. So, she's like, Yumiko must know Mary's birth month. So, she watches blatantly her hand movement as she draws the month down. Six, isn't it? Like, it's so well done so <laughs> she thinks she sees her draw a six but then she's like ah no wait she's maybe she's done that on purpose and it's a nine and she wants me to think it's a six so she puts down september she writes the nine yumemi writes nine they flip the cards yumiko has picked june the sixth she didn't write the nine down and mary's birth month is march I did like this. <laughs> I did like this. That it was like, oh. Yumiko wins because she's the closest to it. But genuinely, Yumiko had no idea when Mary was born and just picked a random month. Should have been at the fucking school for like a week. Yep. Yeah, literally just picked a random month. Yeah, but I suppose if you're really, if you're friends with, no, you, you wouldn't ask, would you? No. No. Sheenie? Even if you're friends I don't know Sheenie. when Jim's Sheenie? birthday is. Sheenie. I only realised that my time off was your birthday when you told me. And we've known each other for how many years? Mm. Exactly. Mm. (laughs) That many years. That many. So all Yumiko did was she wrote down a number that she knew could be interpreted a different way. A six to a nine. That was it. She literally hedged all her bets on. If I write a six down, hopefully she'll think I put a nine. Ah, 69. Always a good one. (laughs) Why? Because you can see their feet. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? I get you. I feel your fam. You better not be feeling my feet. <laughs> no, just your fam. <laughs> Don't be feeling my fam either. <laughs> so Yumemi pays up her fifty million that just she's your dad. <laughs> just she... <laughs> Yumemi pays up her fifty million that she owes, and her little sidekick friend is like, "Just take the money. Don't ruin Yumemi's career. Don't play the recording." Yumiko says that she needs to play the recording. I have so many problems with this. When we get to this point, I well, have so many problems. So, look, in the end, Yumemi's like, you know what, play the recording. People need to see me for who I truly am. That is as simple as that. And she t- she plays the recording and she says at the end of it that that is really her. She says to everybody, that is me, that is the real me, that is actually what I think of you all. I can't, you know, I can't be more blunt than that. And they all win. And the president of the fan club stands up and says that he doesn't care. 
that he likes her for who she is and I don't know. Every, everyone in there is like, yeah, we love you, you Mimi. You've massively insulted every one <laughs> of us, but we love you. We love you really. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> no, just no, none you, of this. Are you, so no then, yeah. Would you accept her apology? No. 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 Why? Just being a fan. Yeah. You're just kind of like, okay, cool. You're you're kind of a cunt. <laughs> but just, you you go like, your way, I guess I'll you can, go my way. I, I guess you can still like her music. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't like Justin Bieber. I feel like Bieber, you're a shitty person, but some of your songs are all right. That's Justin Bieber. Yeah, there you go. That's Lee Grayson. Well, some of my songs are all right. Cheers, bud. <laughs> I've never heard any of <laughs> Because he hasn't recorded it. He's just a shitty person. We don't know what he does with the mics on his own. Yeah, that's true. Good point. <laughs> Fart on him. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up with pink eye in the morning. I wondered why. Every week. <laughs> every week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Yumiko then brings up right at the end the fan letter that she received. And she turns around to Yumemi and is like, I don't suppose you know of anyone who might have sold you out. I don't know why she brings this up. She asked you, Memi. She's like, by the way, somebody sold you out. Uh, know who it might have been? There's a traitor among us. And you, Memi, goes, you know what? I've got nothing to lose here. I bet I know who it was. I'm calling a meeting. The guy who arranged all of this to happen, Kaide, the student council's accountant. Who then comes down to the stage. He, he Because everybody starts slandering him and he walks down, he's like, I'm not having any of this. Nobody's talking bad about me. Uh, now, this sounds like cheap. Uh, I I'm not going to lie at this point. I know. have not done anything wrong here. And then Yumiko's like, I challenge you. And he's like, no thanks. <laughs> he's literally like, I know I've got nothing to gain or look to play you. I've got everything to lose. So why would I do it? This is when she pulls off her tag and says, let's make it official and challenges him to an official match that he can't refuse. And we go into episode 10. Yeah, there's not a lot of content in these, is there? So episode 10 opens with what we think is the president meeting with the heads of each house. No backstory to this, so I don't really know what's going on, right? So she's in a room... With and Professor McGonagall. Th- well, no, there's no, there's nobody in there, Head- is there? Headless Nick is not part of the house. Even I know this. Who's the head of the house? Are they just... The t- head of the are they TV monitors? The what? Are they TV monitors in this room? I can't, I can't I remember, remember. What, what was in there. There's just fuck all. Oh, like, is she sat in the middle of those things around Yeah, her? speakers or something. I don't know what the they? fuck they well, are. I thought they were fucking heads. Literal I they, heads. I thought they were the fucking blocks from the fifth element. I what? don't... I don't <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were literal heads. <laughs> like, I don't know what they are, they were. but they're, she's talking to these speakers all around her. Anyway, they're the heads of each house. Then we jump to back Talk to Kai to Day. <laughs> <laughs> we jump back to Kai Day, and he is stunned that he has been officially challenged. Everybody's stunned because they thought Yumiko was saving it for the president. And she's like, uh, Itsuki's <laughs> gutted as, as well because she thought that she was going to challenge the president. So Kaide has no choice but to agree to the match. And the vice president will be the dealer, the VP. They choose to play poker, but it's a different kind of poker, isn't it? So this is quite a cool... I quite like the concept yeah, of this. This is quite good. It doesn't matter your hand. You just have to guess whether the other well, person is higher or is lower, better or it's better worse. Or, yeah, but you get five cards dealt to you. And you can exchange any number of cards that you want as well. Mm. Best hand wins, or if you bet the most money, you can choose which hand wins. It's that simple. So basically, if you have the highest no, you, bet, you know, then you you get can't to fold and you can't call. Yeah. You, can you can only, only bet, bet or raise. And if you bet the most, you get to choose if you think their hand is better or worse than yours. Well, no, you choose which one wins. You're like, the weakest hand wins this round. Yeah. That's it. And you've got to hope yeah, that you have the weaker fucking, hand. I quite like this. Yeah, it's good. And there's <laughs> the only thing else that they put in there is there's no bet limit. It also doesn't work as a proper game because whoever wins the highest thing gets to choose whether... This is it. There's no limit to the bets either. And that's why everyone's like, well, this is rigged in favour of the student council. With more money. Kaide is richer than Yumiko, so he's going to just 
win and be able to pick what he wants every time. Well, he's got the OnlyFans money, hasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Because he's an accountant <laughs> for TikTok. Joke, yeah. I'm not even it. I'm not, I'm not even getting involved with you. <laughs> what? What have I done? No, you stick Apart on from me. your dad. <laughs> <laughs> so they play it as one chip equals... That's the third time. One, <laughs> one chip equals 10 million yen. So Yumiko turns around and asks for 31 chips. Kaide turns around and says, I'll have 100 chips. They bet one chip to start. and It ends up being a small start to this. It doesn't. It doesn't start straight away. It doesn't kick off like like every game in this. That everyone starts small straight away, don't they? Because they've got to let the audience know how to it actually fucking goes yeah, before they much. start kicking. So off. one chip turns to ten chips, gets raised by Yumiko to twenty one chips, and she wins that hand. She wins it comfortably. She chooses. He doesn't choose to go any higher, which is weird because he's got tons more than her. But he's like, no, I'll just play out this first hand and lose. He's overly confident. So it's 42 chips to 89 at this point. This is when Yumiko discards a pair that she has in her hand. Now, this is obviously a tactic to get rid of... Is it? Is it a tactic to try and say that you've got a strong hand anyway, or...? A bit of both. That's so weird, you would, isn't it? You would... A pair isn't a massively strong hand. It's no. pretty weak in five-hand poker. What you're aiming for are flushes and stuff like that. Or, you know, any higher... Straights and stuff like yeah. that. But, so getting rid of a, of a pair would mean that you would be trying to get to... Something higher a, a or better. or... Yeah. Something, yeah. But Grayson, this is the point where we got to, because I actually was just part of this with yep. you as well, where we both sat there and both went, this is getting to the point where it's the, I know that you know that yeah. I know that you know that I know. Well, Kaide does that whole math magician thing in his head, doesn't he, where he's like, well, the percentage of me losing is... Oh, he... I fucking hated this character so much. I liked him because he was just Leave your methodical. glasses alone. Well, Leave te- your fucking glasses alone. Every two fucking seconds was you know what? Thinky McGee. Do you I know can what? see Push the ending. <laughs> yes! Yes! Love it! Love it! I want the world that God only knows crossed with this. Yes! Do you know what? Those two in a battle, that would be that would be it, wouldn't it? He doesn't he do like a power play here, and he just puts his his hand down. Yeah, he just is he like, lays this it down is on the I've table, got. and he goes, "This is what I've got," and now now bet more than me. Yeah, he basically flops his dick on the table and goes, "All right, try and be bigger there. than this." <laughs> We've all been there, have we? But yeah. doesn't Yumiko put all her chips into this hand? Yeah, yeah. this is when she's like, "I'll yeah. play all forty-one chips." And he's like, well, I've still got more. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm just going to raise. And I choose stronger hand. And he takes it. And he just takes all of Yumiko's money. And she loses. And that's the end of that episode. In, in <laughs> essence, isn't it? Then she, st- Well, then she stands up and turns to Itsuki and says, oh, I need some help. Can you spot me some cash? <laughs> <laughs> Can you spot me some cash? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, you're on it. Got a quid, mate. Yeah. <laughs> And this I need a quid for the fruity machine right now. <laughs> Kaide turns to Itsuki and is like, you can't help her. You're basically my property. That's basically what he tries to say. It's like, I, I help you all the time. I'm the one that got you on the council in the first place. If you don't help her, I'll bring you back in again as my pet as such. This is when Yumiko turns around to Itsuki and is like, you have to offer something to get something she's like you back me and give me money and i can guarantee you will get something out of it at the end offer something to get something (laughs) do you like that concept (laughs) jim's like i'll give you money you give me feet you both get something (laughs) big sound vids did you get those pictures of bell delphine's feet that you paid for who Oh, obviously. <laughs> it was more shifty that you said who rather than no. Mm. <laughs> that was pretty sus. Actually, <laughs> calling a meeting. I know. Who do you mean? <laughs> I, actually, I do not know to whom I know you Cara refer. Cara Delevingne. Cara As he Delevingne? caresses his bath water. Caresses <laughs> 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 his bath water. <laughs> Okay, these guys are completely lost me. Uh uh Yeah, don't worry. Uh Like, genuinely have lost Uh me. And you've never sounded so sus in your life. Like, genuinely have lost (laughs) me. I have no idea at this point. At this point, we get a flashback from Itsuki. Oh, I'm having flashbacks. (laughs) 
We get a flashback from Itsuki and it shows us how Kaide would put her down and was sort of... <laughs> With a fucking sniper rifle or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He'd belittle her and, and treat her poorly even though she was a member of the council at the time. She looks back on that and then she turns around and she's like, you know what, I want to be the president. I want to be the student council president. And in order to do that, I've got to take a risk. And she gives Yumiko 100 chips. And we go into episode 11. We see the the student council president standing in front of all of those speaker things. And she turns what around. What are they supposed to be? The, the, I, Batman. The, I don't know. You've seen the Batman thing. They're where a, he's communication, in front of the TV. a communication that, right? device to all of the heads of houses. And she okay. turns around to them all and is like, I reject all of you. I don't what, know what's going on. What go- does that mean? <laughs> I don't know what's going on at that moment. I, I'm not sure what was being discussed. I don't know what she's rejecting. Are you sure it's like head of houses for the schools or is it like the heads of families? I don't know. I thought it was like family. Or it was I a thought mafia I, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I reject your offers. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. You're right there, Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore. You don't Harry fucking Potter. sound Italian. Let me Did tell you. Did you put your name in the government of fire? <laughs> <laughs> We're fucking nerds. Why are you we? Irish? <laughs> Why are you Irish? I don't Jesus fucking Jesus know, but it worked. They got a laugh. Put in your name in the government of fire. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it, Harry? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ Say it isn't so <laughs> Whatever you do Harry Don't stop me from drinking yeah. <laughs> You're a feckin' idiot Have we fixed Harry Potter? Have we lost our non-existent Irish, Irish, Irish contingent? <laughs> okay back to Kakagure <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta stop drinking. <laughs> you're drinking Coke. <laughs> you drank my beer. You drank my whiskey. You know you're drinking my Coke. Exactly. I've gone through the supply. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so Iski turns around and she states to Kaide that she plans to tear him down from his pedestal and destroy him. She likes Kaide, right? She's got a crush on Kaide. What the? Guy glasses. Eats, Itsuki. Guy. She's got a crush on Kaide because there's a scene later on where she's yeah with him. I'll bring it up when it comes up. A typical that Shini would notice the romance. So <laughs> Yumiko in the next set of hand throws away two queens. She does what she did the last hand that she lost on. She throws away a pair. Twenty chips gets put down. Raised by twenty again and again and again. And the bet increases, increases, increases up to the point where Yumiko goes all in again on the very next hand. So all that 100 that Itsuki's just loaned her, she puts down on the very next hand again. Kaide beats this offer. Itsuki then offers more money, and it just continues to raise again. So they, they get in a betting war. Let's just put it that way. We'll, we'll move through it, because that's all it really is, is it's just raise to raise to raise. This entire episode is, I'll raise you. No, no, I'll raise you. It is. Till the point where... Iski runs out of money to bet. Kaide thinks he's won. And Iski then... <laughs> Yumiko turns around to Iski and goes, you've got something else you could bet. Your life to a life plan. Because Iski is so prestigious in her position that her life is actually worth quite a lot. And she actually turns around to Iski and goes, you think I'm going to lose with these cards? And she shows her the cards. Then she does something I'm not sure why she does. Iski... Uh, rips off her own nails. Yeah. Yep, um, yep. We also tried to do this. Me and Grayson, when we saw this, we were like, "You ain't getting all, all your nails." You're not I getting get, your I guess, entire. I guess if they're not real and they're fake nails, I guess you could. Oh, they you they still snap, can't right? Get no, no, your... they come out from the base. Yeah, from the base, the whole nail. Oh, she pulls the That's whole nail out. That's why she's bleeding. Yeah, she literally pulls. The yeah, whole but nail out. Na- I guess your finger would bleed if you pull off if you oh, yanked off false nails. nails though, so you well. try and get oh, all of your nails in your mouth. You sure they're not fake? They're, that is just her genuine nails. No, no, genuine nails. she rips them off. <sighs> okay, like yeah, because you see like, the bloody look, mess underneath. Huh? Nice. Try and get your hand in your mouth and then get all of the nails. Oh, Jim's literally I can't. I ain't got nails. Hand in his mouth. Lucky dad, you got. (laughs) 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 
in the end, in the end, Itsuki turns around and agrees to put her life plan on the line. Can we like turn off his mic at this point? Like I, like he's obviously tired. We need to put baby to bed. The low hanging fruit, <laughs> <laughs> like your dad's balls. <laughs> That's why I so, do it. That face, right? <laughs> so. You look like an angry mum. <laughs> Iski bets her life. I'm going to send him to bed in a minute. And <laughs> Kaide rejects the raise. He's like, you can't bet your life. That's not fair. There's no monetary value to that. Yumiko turns around and goes, well, it's not for you to decide, actually. It's the dealer to decide if that's a genuine bet or not. So it's up to the VP. The VP turns around and says... Itsuki's from a prestigious family. Her life's worth a lot. In fact, her life's worth... 310 ten, million? 10 billion Bil- yen. What? That's what her life's worth. 10 billion yen. So that's the raise. And then the VP makes the reveal that she is actually the president. Takes off the mask. Shock. It's Shock. the president. Oh. And the president turns around to Sayaka and is like, can you come down and do my hair? And we get the whole, like, her the getting... painting there. of the nails. and Her hair and getting all tarted up again for no reason whatsoever. So the bet on the table at that point stands at 12 billion yen. Kaide gets some sort of flashback at this moment to his father. And his father is talking about how Kaide has been bred for success and that he must succeed in life and become the financial minister well he's the financial minister so he wants to, him to take him, over yeah. yeah yeah so kaide turns around and goes you know what okay i offer my own life and again the president turns around and goes yeah you're prestigious enough your life's worth exactly the same it's ten, not 10 billion yen you don't think it is no she is guaranteed to be part of that family and well he is a not family business while he is, is not is, there's no guarantee that he's going to go there no true yeah his position is based on being elected into that position. Yeah, I would say five bill. Well, yeah, there's a chance. I just don't think it's worth as much the same. It j- she says the same. So he, but isn't that calling, not raising? Or am I wrong? What? It is, but he's already above her in the raising. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I've got you. Yeah. So his is worth ten billion. Iski turns around and goes, oh, "Fuck, we've got a bet more." She's like, "Well, how about Mary and Ryota's life?" And the president's like, n- not asking them if that's okay. And the president's like, no, they're not worth anything. Which they're not. To be fair. <laughs> Go on, Grayson. They're worth fuck all. What, their life? Yeah, it's fucking nothing. In the context, well, re- in the context I was of this say, game, uh, their life they're financially worth nothing. nothing. Well, like 10,000? Yeah, well, it's, it's not enough life. for this, the stakes. Yeah, that's not for the student that. council to bother with anyway. Yeah. So, Kaide wins... And he turns around, he takes the stronger hand. And we see Itsuki break down. She's crying because she thinks that they've lost the hand. Kaede puts down three of a kind. He's got three eights. Itsuki's pretending to cry. And in fact, she's actually secretly laughing. That's because it's the I know that you know that I know that you know that I knew. She's played yeah. him from the start. Yeah. Literally from the start. And Yumiko lays down her three of a kind. Jack's over eights. Yumiko wins the hand. Kaide freaks out and collapses. <laughs> yeah, like, he, His well, glasses no, break. No, yeah. he gets, no, he gets fired from the student council and the shock from being fired fractures his glasses, which cause him to fall off the chair and collapse. In the background of this... Did you see him put he's on a getting... stretcher? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. get tucked into a blankie. He got, and uh, he his got, hair went white. He got stretched off and his hair went his white. His hair went white. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck me, it was stupid. And then the president starts talking about a supernova and um, that she's always wanted to see the beauty what? of a supernova. I didn't get the context. Was she trying, she's she always trying to, trying to symbolise things, isn't she? Like the back of the eye thing with the fucking other side of the moon. Now she's talking about a supernova and that Yumiko is like a supernova. and She's exploding onto the scene? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. No, she's exploding everywhere fucking else. Uh, and no, the, uh, that's the uh, other girl <laughs> with no eye. She she's eye. going everywhere. And, and the, you're having to mop it up as you go. So. <laughs> the episode ends with... What are you doing with this one? Like, what? this guy's hair's changed. Are you, like, having to carry him out on a stretcher this time? I'm, I'm not medical. I mean, to be fair, I'm sitting there in the Neither, neither were the guys that carried him off. <laughs> Sheenie's the one on the stretcher. I don't know. They point, touched him he? in pretty good. Yeah. Sheenie, your hair's gone white and you're on a stretcher. No, I'm, I'm like the student council president, but just less fucking poetic. 
about the other side of the moon and all that bullshit. He's giving himself a promotion now. He has, isn't he? He's probably giving himself a... You were the financial guy a minute ago. No, no. I'm not. No, because I'm not like that. I'm not the fucking... I don't sit there and crunch numbers. Won't spend a tenner on Overwatch, though. That's true. Exactly. Yeah. Cheap ass. To play with his mates. Cheap ass. Offer something to get something. Jim, your feet. No. (laughs) So, So the episode ends with both the president... And Yumiko turning around saying that they are they plan to risk everything on a gamble. And we go into the final episode, episode 12. It opens with Ryota talking about how afraid he is for Yumiko for taking on the president. He's worried that she's going to risk everything and it's not going to work. And he's worried about her. And he just plays the same... I mean, this, is the, this, this episode he finally has some depth in eventually. But he's still... They carry I'm on this it's whole... Depth. It's, just, it's development. Just, just development. Pull yeah. the fucking string. He's like a woody fucking character. Pull a string and you get I'm the worried, same I'm fucking I'm worried, thing. I'm worried, I'm worried. I'm worried that this is not going to go right. <laughs> I'm worried this ain't going to go right. I feel bad for what's happening. And he's speaking to Yumiko. And Yumiko's getting all hot and bothered about the concept of taking on the president. And Ryota turns around and goes, can I come with you? And she's like, oh, you don't have to do that. And he's like... I just want to watch you. I want to be with you. <laughs> and it's like, right, okay. <laughs> there was a lot. Ever of, had a girl say that to you? There was a lot of innuendos in there, yeah. and I completely left all of them. <laughs> Anyone ever just said, I just want to watch you? <laughs> I just want to come with you. I just want to be with you. No, Any no, no, of those? I just, no, no. You sort yourself out. I just want to watch you. <laughs> and Mary turns up. <laughs> you know what? Mary turns up and she turns to Yumiko and is like, <laughs> "Give us a second. Go." On. <coughs> Mary turns up and she turns to Yumiko and is like, "You need to practice in preparation for taking on the pre- How is she going to fucking practice? She doesn't even know what game she's going to play. Yeah. Mary's like, "You need to practice. Practice what, Mary? Play some solitaire. Pra- practice. <laughs> practice what?" Gambling is what it says on the fucking tin. It's a gamble. How can you fucking practice? Especially tarot cards. Tarot well, yeah, but cards. They, at this point, they don't even know what they're That's fucking That's what they playing. used in the last game, yeah, yeah, tarot cards. And Itsuki turns Chris up and is like... <laughs> <laughs> now he's tired. <laughs> yeah, dad jokes are coming out right now. <laughs> Itsuki turns up and is like, I've got all these fixed games that you can use and fixed cards and dice and loaded... Just... Methods of cheating. Iski turns up with all her little tri- tricks of the trade. Yumiko turns around and is like, I'm not going to cheat. I'd throw him for a fucking loop. Snakes and ladders, bitch. <laughs> a fucking mousetrap. We'll, uh, we'll play fucking Kaplunk or something like that, shall we? And Mary and Iski turn around to Yumiko and are like, oh, uh, we're coming with you, by the way, for your match, because you're our friend. We want to cheer you on. And so the game begins. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> so the pre- Read your palm. <laughs> when they get there, the president and Yumiko are um, very into each other, aren't they? Just they're too little, into each other. Yeah, much. there's a bit of a moment where they're sort of holding each other, and yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We've all been there. No, we haven't. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> this, this is where James wanted it to go. <laughs> <laughs> what game are we playing? <laughs> Saruna is there, and she has been selected to be the referee for the match. Impartial. Referee. It's a boxing match at this point. <laughs> uh, she, well, apparently she's there to stop any cheating, is what she's there for. And they decide that the bet that they're going to make is for their place in the school. You lose, you get kicked out of the school. It's that simple. Pretty high stakes. Kind of like it. That means everything to Yumiko. She loves the school, and the president loves the school. It's everything to them. So the game is tarot cards. I don't understand this at all. So the role, the rules of this game. Each tarot card has a, a value from naught, uh, from one to twenty-one. Three people are selected to choose one card. If you pick the card and it's the right side up, uh, yeah. If it, yeah, if it's the right side up, it's a plus. If it's upside down, it's a minus. If the game is ended on a plus, Yumiko wins. If the game's ended on a minus, the president wins. I'm glad you fucking took this in, because fuck me, and then there's struggling. there's the full card, and its value is zero, simply because if you draw or find the full card, and it's in the upright position, you automatically win, and if it's upside down, you'll automatically 
lose or Yumiko will lose. It's that simple. It's literally money. Three pick of a cards. Each of them have their own value. That's it. It's that simple. Or pick the fool and win automatically. It's like that. So the three people who are going to draw these cards are Yumiko, the president, and Ryota is picked of all the people. Oh, I don't want to pick the card. <laughs> and uh, the president decides to pick the past. Yumiko picks the present and Ryota picks the future. I don't... That's what you do with tarot cards. Yeah, isn't it? You, tarot card you, you pick, pick three, three cards, cards and they represent each present, stage future. of your life. Yeah. Ryota agrees to this. Uh, he's reluctant at first, isn't he? He's like, why is it me? I don't want to have the responsibility. In the end, he agrees to do it. So Yumiko goes first and she finds a card valued at one plus one that's it president goes second and she has that little speech thing where she's walking around and she's giving it the big one, and she draws the card that's worth minus 21 points so there's a minus 20 difference well she talks about like do you believe in fate and stuff mm. like that and it's like fatalism and like how she finds the wheel. best card other than the fool that you can find where's well, the roulette wheel as well isn't it it's yeah. like Oh, yeah, um, somebody spun a roulette wheel and landed on black 28 times in a row. And yeah. it wasn't... Four, I, think it's, I think she said the record for black... No, is it black or red? Red coming up in a row is like 42. And she was like, yeah. could you imagine that even the dealer himself must have thought that game was fixed? Yeah. Like, it's just all about fate. And she draws the best card, apart from the fool that she could possibly draw, and it leaves the game at minus 20 difference. Ryota needs to find the fool in the upright position to win the game automatically for Yumiko. They never mentioned the fact that he could draw the plus 20. Yeah, or a 21. No, he can't. It's already been drawn. Oh, that, yeah, sorry. So plus 20 is the only thing he can do. Yumiko turns around and is like, Ryota, don't even worry about it. Don't stress. It is what it is. If, if I have to leave, I have to leave. But Ryota has this newfound determination. Is this a bit where magic's to the table? Yeah, it is. And uh, <laughs> like there was a point <laughs> where in, me... inside it. Yeah. yeah, he just magics from the outside. Of he was in the. Table. He was on the outside. Fuck off! Fuck off! He just walks and he suddenly he just walks past her and goes yeah. behind her. Walks Ooh. past her and he's then through the table. He's fucking whispering in here. Can I keep you? Unless literally he's like. That's a Casper reference for the young. He t- he turns around to Yumiko and is like, "I want to be with you." That's what he says. So much, I will go through physical matter. <laughs> bug up. Bug up. That's not bug up. I think he's literally flipped the table so quick we didn't even see it. And got <laughs> At this point, by the way, Itsuki and Mary have spotted something that nobody else has seen yet. Juicy That cards. Ryota hasn't seen. And <laughs> Runa cards. turns around to him and is like, if you say anything, the game's over and Yumiko loses. Terrible so they can't say again. anything. Ryota is standing there. He's trying to spot something. Then he sees it. The marked card. Juicy. It's a juicy got, card, isn't it? It's got nail. Why do you keep saying juicy card? It is a I juicy card. It's got it's nail like, gloss is on it. Is it nail gloss? Yes. Are you sure? They establish it. It's the president's nail gloss on her finger <clears> that she's touched <throat> on the card. Freshly painted. Mm. Yes. Because it's the only one that she touched. Yes. The only time she ever picked a card up was the full card to show it. And that's when it got, well, we don't know. But that might be when it got marked. Accidentally. Wink, wink. Uh, to be fair, if that's not juicy, it gets juicy in a couple of minutes. It's better because Ryota turns around and is just about to flip that card when he decides that he doesn't want to. That he thinks that... Mm, I know that you know that I know. Yeah, it could be a setup. So he turns around and is like, you know what, I'm going to pick at random. And, and then, then she... Oh, like, she really dry humps it. Yeah. Dry humps it. Well, juicy. I say dry hump. <laughs> Sobby and then we get it. him spinning around in a circle. Why? <laughs> Why is this? Choosing a card. Mm. No. All the way around. That's not how you And she's this. getting really turned on and grabbing him. And yep. he's like... Yep. Now you see where the juiciness came from. Why? Did you not like it? No. Why? No. No. That's not what this was supposed to be about. She's, well, like, that, she's like the devil on your shoulder. That's no, what she was. No, she's like a succubus on your arm. Yeah, well, there you go. Suck on what, sorry? <laughs> and he picks at random and he picks the judgment card valued at plus 20 which makes the game even everyone wins and loses at the same it's a draw nobody loses nobody leaves the school 
Iski's pissed off that it's ended in a draw. Mary's turned around and is like, don't be pissed off. It's, the president probably cheated with that card anyway, so we don't even know if that was the, the fool or not. And just as they're going to go and see if it was the fool, Runa collects all the cards up before anyone can check if that was the real card or not. You'd want to fucking know. Yeah, I wanted to know, to be honest, but that was it. That's the mystery that it left. That was the only mystery, though, that I really wanted to know, to be honest, at that point. Then Runa... It jumps to Runa having that phone conversation with the vice president. Yeah. Who looks exactly the same as the VP. Who looks... Yeah, it's the spitting image of the... President. President. Yeah, the vice president looks the same as the VP. Yeah. Yeah. And then it starts flicking through everybody that we've met in the school, uh, like Nanami and everything like that. And, and you start seeing th- them in the school going through their normal life. Hated this. It's just a day-to-day thing. Yeah. And we find out that the student council's been dissolved. Interesting. That yeah. was interesting. That's, that's news. And then it jumps back to Yumiko and she is still gambling. She's sitting there playing another match against somebody we don't see. And it talks about the fact that Yumiko is Yumiko and she will always be a compulsive gambler. And it ends. So we've watched all 12 episodes. Thank God. Of Kakaguri. What's our final thoughts? I've climbed to the top of that mountain and now I really want to slide off of it right now. And do that with the amount of juice in this. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is only secondary to Shimonia for the amount of juices that are flowing throughout this entire Just thing. so much. How are they not dehydrated? Mm. All the time. Like, the drainage in this school must be excellent. Oh, I must be in fucking public. The absorbent carpet. No, (laughs) Grayson, 24-hour job. Yep. He's in there all day, every day, mopping buckets. He's got like seven different buckets on each eye, (laughs) on each blooming corridor. He's got like a team behind him. Team, a whole team. (laughs) So how are we feeling about it? I hated it. Like, I have never hated an anime. Like, I can dislike them, and I don't like parts of it, but I still enjoy parts of it. This anime, I just hated. I had nothing from it. The entire time, didn't feel anything. I got to episode four and just went, I'm turning it off. Maybe I'll feel better the next time I watch it. I watched it again. Nothing. And that is very rare for me. Like, I just, no investment, no stakes for me. Nothing to keep me around to actually watch it. That's it. Like I've got nothing. Maybe probably the only thing that got me interested was the gun game. And they ruined that with the animation, the over juiciness of what was going on and the over animation of what was happening on screen. And the poor voice acting as well. There was so much poor voice acting, but I just couldn't get into the anime at all. And that is so rare for me to actually dislike an anime i'm sorry guys i've got nothing no, it's, but it weren't, it weren't your genre uh, uh, do you know what though premise i thought i was gonna really like it as soon as you said to me it's about gambling i was like oh sweet gambling but it just completely missed the mark with me completely missed the mark it just it was not what i expected to be watching i thought it was gonna be like some fucking realistic realism like there's real stakes real problems that we're going to have to go through but it just goes from one to a hundred goes past that and then you've got nowhere to go like all you can keep doing with this anime is raising the stakes and they've raised the stakes so high so quick they open with season two with a game where um there's like a finger guillotine exactly like you can lose fingers and stuff and you've already got to the point that is the first episode of season two and that's what i'm on about like, you raise the stakes so high, so quick. Like, where can you go other than to that, but where it becomes horror rather than thriller psychological? Like this, I would have much preferred it to be a lot more psychological, the I know that you know, and I've got this, but you've got this, and I know that this is the next thing that you're going to have to do. Wait, is she going to do that? Okay. You want Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, but didn't you say you didn't like that? Because that was the whole Kai Day thing. That was the whole president thing with the tarot cards. I know. No, you know. no. I wanted more of like an, a thinking about it, a slow, methodical game. So I'd have rather had three. I don't know. I would have found them more boring. Maybe. But it was fucking. Yeah, but you've already got to the point where you've got nowhere to go. You don't know that. You haven't seen season two. <laughs> I don't need to. 
they, they're already up to life plans and like you're already putting your life on the line. Yeah, but that's just the structure one. of the school as is. And that's season one. Where can you go when you've already got your life on the line and you're already stabbing yourself in the eye with a pen? <laughs> that's one character. One that I didn't like. But it's there. And that's yeah. where we're at. Like, I would have much preferred the slow build of she's fighting her way through these people and she can get there. And then maybe at the end of the season one, yeah, she'll have her overreach. Oh, fuck, I'm back down all the way down to the bottom. Sort of thing. The fight. The actual climb to get to the top. Hmm. Because that's what this entire anime is built on. There's a structure that you have to fight to get to the top. But you don't fight. You just donate. No, but you fight by going through these gambles to actually earn more money to get yourself through this. Or you just come in like Iski with the money and just buy your seat. Yeah, which is ridiculous. And that's what I mean. I'd rather her fight against <laughs> the system. But we've got none of that. Like I said, there's no... You don't know what she's fighting for. Her addiction. We know what she's fighting for. She fights because she's Wants addicted to. to gambling. There may be more to her than that. that that's why... But yeah, we don't but, know uh, because right we've now, had nothing. We've, we've you've had, no you've had the we've got... smallest slither of a sister in a mental institute and that's all you know. But that's what I mean. Like, that's it. I've got nothing to but tie me the to the The only information you're given is the information that the student council are given. You, uh, you know as much as they know. But that's what I'm on about. Like, I have nothing because to Yuma tie Kong me to... Because Yumiko has never once spoken about herself. Yeah. And not once has anybody asked about herself. Well, I've got R- nothing Ryota's never turned her. around and gone, you know what, Yumiko, what's your story? But that's what I mean. I've got nothing to root for this character for. Hmm. You, you can go, but I've got nothing. <laughs> like, I, You know I give animes the ban- benefit of the doubt. This is the first time that I'm genuinely angry about an anime because it's just given me nothing to Roles go on. Roles might be reversed then. Because know. it wasn't bad, wasn't good. This was what I expect a Netflix anime to be. Mm-hmm. It's exactly where I... It's, it's middle middle of the fucking field. No one gives a shit. No one's going to go out their way to watch it or be a fan of it. This is not getting fucking cosplays and everything fucking else from a fan base. I don't even think it's going to get a fan base. But well, you've already said, actually, somebody of yours doesn't mind one of the uniforms. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't want the uniform, but... <laughs> it's for different reasons. Mm-hmm. It's just lets itself down in places like a Netflix show does. They try and imitate other shows that have had success in what is probably the first unique storyline in anime we've had in fucking years. Yeah, I would agree all, with they're that. all like well, rehashed you know, you don't of get the same one. thing. That why we go, oh, you're into Izakai, here's 50. And they're just the ones that we want you to watch. And then there's 50,000 of the ones you don't really need to watch. And every other genre has that. This kind of settles into its own little place. Yeah, you could fit it into psychological and and thrillers and stuff like that. But the whole gambling aspect and everything else is kind of the closest things you're going to get. It's kind of King's Game and it's nowhere near it. It's a nice, fresh take as a story done Netflix bad. Oh god, this is this its is, biggest letdown this is miles was Netflix doing game. it. Oh, miles above it. Yeah, but its biggest problem this thing really is, yeah, yeah King's Game King's Game is a fucking piece this of dog is miles shit. Miles above King's Game. Its biggest problem, I think, was handing it over to Netflix to make it. I, th- I think they, I think been, they came up they with the original safe. story. Yeah, that might have been the problem. Too safe. If I don't think it's too safe. I think they the just animation they, they studio, went for something that's not been done. Yeah, the animation studio did. An okay job. Had someone else done it, would it have been better? Yeah, it fucking would have. I liked the Christmas of the pictures and the animation. Yeah, it um, looked okay, but it looked like a really good imitation. It didn't look like an original art style. Yeah, I it agree definitely with that. didn't have a stamp on it that says, "Oh, I recognise this," or "This stands out." It looked good, but it looked good like Pokemon did. It looked good like Yu Gi Oh did. It looked good like run of the mill anime does but it also i i know you agree with me on this it throws you out at times with the animation the, the f- yeah like you get used to the animation i style. hated the close-ups of mary when her face contorted yeah. i like i liked every time that yumiko went sadist super saiyan i not super saiyan sadist i yeah, liked, just I liked their moments 
She went Fine. mental. Fine. I like Super the over exaggeration of lust that she I was getting from the, the gambling. Moment. I liked the lust. I hated the way it was portrayed. Yeah. I think they just leaned too far into mm-hmm. that evil psychopathic look. It was just how many Completely. creases has that face got on it? Every yeah, time it you was see just, it. and that's Mary's that, that pissed me you off. You get that fish eye lens on it for yep. some reason, and it's just like, just stop. If you want to zoom in on that face looking like a psychopath, fucking cool, but stop with these kind of tropes that you've stolen from other shows because it worked there. Don't do it here. The voice acting in this as well was so up and down. Like one or two characters stood out as good. I liked Yumiko. Yeah, Yumiko was was a good one. Um, Ryota could have... His voice the, acting was fine, considering he was a nobody. But that's yeah. why it was fine, because it, it was like... It was he didn't have to blank. He didn't have to work hard to no. be a voice actor like, for that character. Like you said, he doesn't need to be he, there. He's our tour guide in this fucking show. Yeah, yeah. That's you, I liked job. Yumiko, and I liked the president. The president, I hated was, president was good. I didn't like Midori. Everything else was kind of just either somewhere between shit and forgettable. I liked Yumemi. It was like a 50-50 with characters. Yeah. It was like you liked half of them and the other half were terrible. But I think that's also down to the animation. It's down to the... the I think w- character uh, choice came into it massively. Script. Somebody came up with Midori. And I think it's was like, oh, why, did well. you, why did you come up with this In a character? school, like, that's, just, that's not happening. No. I think it's the scripting as well. The way they've been told to talk Her, and I act. get the point of Midori. The point is, this is a rich person who does not give a flying fuck yeah. about money she doesn't care she's rich she's like i can have whatever the fuck i like but you know what i can't have the thrill of losing my life that's that was the point of yeah. her that was the point that was she was like i can't get a thrill from anything because it i can have everything would have been anything. fucking better then if she would have been in a car accident where she nearly died or was put a gunpoint because she yeah. was in a bank backstory to why and, she's like you know, that a flashback when she's explaining it yeah, to our the fucking only, the main only thing character. We got was was the just eye. Like, yeah, I was in a bank and I got a I gun got put a to my head. Situation or something. And you know what? I fucking liked it. Yeah. Like just something. And could that led to an the obsession. Fucking design of her for fuck's sake. Yes. Yeah, so oh, I hated it's too it. Too exaggerated. It was just yeah. It was like let's take this one character and crank this one up to eleven, but yeah. leave the rest at a good seven. Yeah. I liked your finance guy. Yeah, was, yeah, but again, I'd have liked to have had more backstory than but him just having you're one getting... scene of him going, "Yes, you will be the head of my." Uh, this is what you're getting. You're like, more. I like Kaide, I like <clears throat> Yumemi, I don't like Runa, I don't like. Uh, I don't think they needed Midori. massive amounts of backstory. I think his made fine sense. I didn't need any more to explain the character. Oh, he was cut and dry. Hers was a fucking huge problem. Midari. His, you know, what, while you were curious about him. What they explained was enough to explain why he was involved in this. There's still some that are un- unexplained. Obviously, yeah. we don't know about Runa. Nope. Anything about her at all. We don't know about the VP. Nope. Uh, although, obviously, we were under the impression she's a twin. Twin? We're going to twins, twin. right? Uh, hence the mask and stuff, yeah. But that's it. But the it's games amazing. are really good. The games are really good. No, the games, games are, are really good. good. They're pretty well The out. premise is really good. The art style is okay. It's yeah. not brilliant. Half just, the characters are good. Half the characters are good. Yep. The I would say the voice acting's okay. Five characters. That's, that's yeah, but we about only. Half. I was going to say we only meet about ten. Mm, you get. We we'll get more than that. No, nah, twelve episodes. <laughs> oh, really? What? The, Six student council. Eight, eight games total, right? Two main characters. That's I, about ten like, to twelve. Like characters I said, you might show. as well take out the fucking guy. There's no point yeah, of him yeah, being there. Really? Is he's he's our tour guide. That's why he's there. But I don't need a tour guide. No, we don't, but it's... He is supposed to, to cleanse kind of... your palate from the extremist that is yeah. Yumiko. They're, they're polar opposites. Because She's if excited, you just had 24-7 worried. of Yumiko, you'd be like, for fuck's sake, calm well, we don't down. Well, if we had 24-7 of Yumiko, we'd just get fucking Gun Girl. That's <laughs> what that'd turn into. Let's give this a final rating. Oh, fuck it. Grayson, do you want to start? Sure, why not? Um, three and a half. I, I, it's all it deserves. I would never watch this again. It's like a point above fucking King's Game. Yeah, okay. I never ever fucking watch. It's better than King's Game. I, do, I, I, I thought it was miles better mi- than King's Game. Oh, I won't go miles. No, I won't go by miles. No, I, I really like this anime. So you, you do yours. Yeah, no. So I will give this an eight point five. An eight point five. I really like this anime. We're gonna have a space dandy. So we found your space dandy. I like these characters. We have found your space dandy. <laughs> 
because I am nowhere near. I'm giving it three point five. Okay, like there was scenes and there was occasions, but apart from that, I fucking hated this. Okay, so Kakagure comes in with the summoning boys five point one out of ten. God, that got dragged up by your score. Yeah, but it is just average. Yeah, it is just average. And it also shows that it's certainly not each, everybody's cup of tea. It can go one way or another there, really. Would you recommend someone to watch this? No. Yes. For something different to cleanse the palate? Well, and we know if, you if would because you recommended and... this. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big problem right now is fucking the amount of Izakai. Yeah, that there's so out. many Izakai. It's a genre right? that fucking flew and then it's like, just please stop. We get it. It's been going since Monster Rancher. It's just something. Quit. It's just something different. And that's why you yeah. you, you should put and it. We're in really there. fucking looking for that. We're you know, really and it, fucking and it's that, because it's God. on Netflix. It's easily available yeah. for people to watch as well. So you look, know. you might look. I don't like it. Sheeny likes it. Grayson's Doesn't. nonplussed. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't like it. I mean, if you yeah, want to watch it, go watch it because the simple fact is, and if you're listening to this, you've probably watched it. You might agree with me. You might agree with Sheen, but. It's, I think this is definitely one that fucking splits the room. And on that note, it's time for us to chuff off. All you summoners can join us next time, where we will be going through episode one to six of Orange. If you've got any questions or queries, or just want to see what we're up to, you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at How Not to Summon, or join our Discord at How Not to Summon a Podcast. I've been Sheeny Senpai. I've been Jim. I've been Grayson. See you later, guys. See ya. Tara. <laughs>